Do you ever wonder how to engage in an English conversation at the office effortlessly? Well, you're not alone. Mastering office chats in English can seem daunting, but it's a crucial aspect of professional communication. Whether it's welcoming a new colleague, discussing a project, or even asking for leave, the ability to converse effectively can make all the difference. And that's what we're here for. Today, we will explore various common office scenarios and the English conversations that can occur in them. Imagine it's your first day at a new office, how do you introduce yourself? Let's envision a dialogue between two office workers, one being the new employee, whom we'll call Alex, and the other, a friendly colleague named Sam. Alex walks up to Sam and says, Hi, I'm Alex, today's my first day here. A simple greeting like this is an easy way to break the ice. It's always good to start with your name and a little bit about why you're there. Sam, being the friendly colleague he is, responds with, Nice to meet you Alex, I'm Sam. How's your first day going so far? This kind of response shows interest in the new colleague and helps to foster a friendly atmosphere. Alex might reply, It's going well, thank you. Everyone has been very welcoming. Alex's response is positive and polite, key traits when making first impressions. Then they might engage in small talk about the office environment. Sam could ask, how are you finding the office so far? This is a common question when welcoming a new colleague and it shows a genuine interest in their comfort within the new environment. Alex might reply, It's great, I really like the open workspace and the view from the window is fantastic. This answer is honest and positive, showing appreciation for the office environment. Sam could then offer some friendly advice or information about the office saying, That's good to hear, if you need any help finding your way around or have any questions, feel free to ask me. This shows Sam's willingness to be helpful and supportive, critical qualities in fostering a good working relationship. Alex would then thank Sam saying, Thank you Sam, I appreciate your help. This polite response shows gratitude and helps to further build a good rapport. This is a simple yet effective example of how a conversation between a new employee and an existing one might go. It's filled with greetings, self-introductions, and small talk about the office environment. Remember, a warm welcome can set the tone for a great working relationship. Let's dive into a more professional scenario, discussing a project. Imagine, you're at the office, and you and your colleague, let's call her Jane, are tasked with a new assignment. It's common to ask for help when you're unsure about something, so you might say, Jane, could you help me understand this part of the project? It's a simple, polite request that opens the door for further discussion. Jane might respond with, sure, I'd be happy to explain it involves. Now let's say you have an idea that you believe could improve the project. You could share it by saying, I was thinking, what if we tried this approach instead? By framing your suggestion as a question, it invites input and collaboration rather than dictating your idea. Jane might respond with, that's an interesting perspective, let's explore that. But what if you disagree with an idea Jane proposes? It's important to remember to disagree politely. You might say, I see where you're coming from Jane but I have some concerns about that approach. This acknowledges Jane's idea while also expressing your viewpoint. Jane could respond with, I understand your concerns, let's discuss how we can address them. Lastly, setting deadlines is a crucial part of any project discussion. You could propose a deadline by saying, if we start now, I believe we can have this finished by next Friday, does that work for you Jane? Jane might respond with, next Friday sounds feasible, let's aim for that. So, to recap. When discussing a project, you may need to ask for help, share ideas, disagree politely and set deadlines. Remember, the goal is to work together to achieve the best outcome. The key is to communicate clearly, respectfully and collaboratively. Clear communication is key to successful project discussions. Now how would you ask for a leave of absence in English? Let's dive into a typical dialogue between an employee and their supervisor. The employee starts by setting the tone of the conversation saying, Excuse me, do you have a moment? I'd like to discuss something with you. The supervisor, being open and receptive, replies, Of course, what can I help you with? The employee then gets straight to the point. I'd like to request some time off next month. It's always important to be straightforward and clear with your request. The supervisor, wanting to understand the situation, might ask, Can I ask what the reason is? This is where the employee needs to explain the reason for the leave. My sister is getting married in Florida and I need to be there for the wedding. Once the reason is stated, the employee should confirm the leave date, saying something like, I'd like to take leave from the 10th to the 15th of next month. The supervisor then acknowledges this. I see, I'll make a note of your requested dates. The employee thanks the supervisor. Thank you for understanding. 
and the supervisor closes the conversation with, You're welcome. I hope you have a wonderful time at the wedding. This is just one example of how to ask for leave. The key is to be polite, clear, and concise. And remember it's always a good idea to ask for leave well in advance. It's always crucial to be polite and clear when asking for time off. What if you have to handle a difficult conversation at work? This is a scenario that can make even the most seasoned professional break out in a cold sweat. But it's also an integral part of the workplace dynamic. You might have to critique a colleague's performance, address a sensitive issue, or even mediate a dispute. So how can you navigate these tough talks while maintaining professionalism and respect? Let's imagine a conversation where one individual has to provide constructive criticism to another. This could be a manager addressing an employee or even a coworker offering feedback to a peer. The conversation might start with expressing concern. You could say, I've noticed that you've been struggling with meeting deadlines recently. Is there something going on that's making it difficult for you? Next comes the feedback stage. It's essential to be clear, concise, and above all, respectful. You might say something like, I've observed that the quality of your work is not up to its usual standard. I believe I speak for both of us when I say that we want to see you succeed here. After providing feedback, it's time to discuss potential solutions. You could suggest, maybe we could look at adjusting your workload or perhaps there's a way we can offer additional support to help you meet your deadlines. Throughout the conversation, it's important to listen as much as you speak. This shows that you're not just there to criticize but also to support and help find solutions. Remember, the goal of constructive criticism is improvement, not humiliation. And finally, wrap up the conversation on a positive note. You might say, I appreciate your openness to this discussion. I'm confident that we can work together to improve the situation. Remember, handling difficult conversations with grace is a part of professional life. It's about fostering a supportive and productive work environment where everyone feels valued and heard. So, the next time you're faced with a difficult conversation at work, take a deep breath and remember these tips. Now that we have explored various office conversations, let's recap what we've learned today. Our first stop was welcoming a new colleague. Remember, this is a crucial first impression. We learned to keep things friendly and professional, asking about their journey and offering assistance. The goal is to make them feel comfortable and part of the team from day one. Next, we dove into discussing a project. This conversation is often more technical and requires clear, concise communication. We went over how to ask insightful questions, express ideas, and provide feedback in a respectful manner. Always remember, it's about the project's success, not personal egos. Then we tackled asking for leave. This can sometimes feel awkward, but it's a normal part of work life. We learn to be direct, respectful, and provide ample notice whenever possible. It's also important to make arrangements for our responsibilities during our absence. Lastly, we faced a challenging conversation, dealing with difficult topics. We learned it's about approaching the situation with empathy, understanding, and respect. Be clear and direct, but remember it's not about winning an argument. It's about resolving the issue and maintaining a positive working environment. So, there you have it. A quick tour of some common English conversations you might encounter in the office. The key takeaway from today's discussion is the importance of clear, respectful, and concise communication in the workplace. It's not just about the words you use, but also how you say them. Learning a language is a journey, and every conversation you have is a stepping stone on that path. So, don't be afraid to practice these dialogues. The more you use them, the more comfortable you'll become. And soon, you'll be able to navigate English conversations at the office with ease. Before we wrap up, remember learning is a continuous process, so stay tuned for more English learning content. We have plenty more in store for you. And if you found this video helpful, show your support by giving it a like, sharing it with your friends, and subscribing to our channel. Practice these dialogues and soon, you'll be able to navigate English conversations at the office with ease. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more English learning content. Until next time.